Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into something uh, pretty bizarre today. Definitely your usual. Yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, people allergic to me or PATM? I haven't. Sounds intriguing, though. It is. So basically, uh, people with this condition, they seem to trigger allergic reactions in others. Like they're the allergen themselves. Exactly. You might think, come on, is that even real? Yeah, I'd be skeptical, too. But we've got some wild stories and some recent research from Japan that might just change your mind. Oh, wow. Japan. Lay it on me. Imagine, like, just walking into a room and people start sneezing uncontrollably or breaking out in hives. Oh, that's rough. Or even weirder, some people report that their body odor changes around someone with PATM. Wait, what? Changes how? <laughs> it's really unpleasant. I know, it's crazy, right? But it's a real thing for people with PATM, and they often feel very isolated. I can imagine. So what do we know about this PATM? Is it, like... An official medical condition? Well, that's the thing. There isn't even an official medical name for it yet. Really? So how are oh, people right. even figuring out they have this? It's mostly through online communities and support groups. Ah, the internet. Connecting people with rare conditions. Exactly. Like, there's this woman, Medina. She's only 23. Okay. And she says she spent a whole year searching online before she even found other people talking about it. Wow. That's a long time to feel alone with something like that. Right. And for some people, it's not just a minor inconvenience. It's completely changed their lives. Like how so? Well, take Fahima, for example. She's a mother who can't even go to her son's school plays. Oh, why not? Because she's afraid of triggering reactions in the audience. Oh, wow. That's heartbreaking. I know. She basically lives in constant fear of how her presence will affect others. And on top of that, she's mentioned her own body odor changing over time, getting more unpleasant. Yeah, it's a sensory aspect we don't fully understand, but it adds another layer of complexity to this whole thing. That's fascinating, though. There has to be some underlying biological reason for that, right? Well, that's where the research from Japan comes in. Okay, tell me more about this research. <laughs> so, this professor Yoshika Sakin, he's discovered that people with PATM emit certain chemicals from their skin at much higher levels than normal. Interesting. What kind of chemicals are we talking about? Things like toluene, sulfur compounds, and hexanol. Hmm. Toluene, isn't that found in, like, paint and explosives? You got it. And it can irritate the respiratory system and skin. Makes sense why people might react to it, right? Yeah, that's starting to connect the dots. Then the sulfur compounds, well, those are known for their strong, often bad odors. That explains the body odor thing, maybe? Possibly. Yeah. And then there's hexanol, which has a hay-like scent. Wow, so it's like a whole chemical cocktail they're emitting. Exactly. And these chemicals have been linked to things like sick building syndrome, where people get sick from the indoor environment. So there are definite connections to existing knowledge about these chemicals. Right. And this research is huge because it finally validates what people with PATM have been saying all along. Yeah. It's not just in their heads. There's a real measurable phenomenon happening. And that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating, right? We're peeling back the layers of a medical mystery that's only just starting to be understood. Totally. It's like we're witnessing a scientific breakthrough in real time. This is just the beginning, and who knows what other discoveries are waiting to be uncovered. I can't wait to see what else we learn. But first, I think we need to talk about how PATM is different from conditions that might seem similar, especially those that are more psychological, right? You're talking about olfactory reference disorder, right? Exactly. Where people think they smell bad even if no one else can smell it. Yeah, it seems like a crucial distinction to make. But we can dive into that more after a quick break. Sounds good. We'll be right back to explore how PTM differs from awardee and what it all means for those seeking diagnosis and support. Looking forward to it. With sure. ORD, it's all about how the person perceives their own body odor. Right, like they're convinced they smell bad even if no one else notices. Exactly, and it can be really distressing for them. Oh, absolutely. But that's where the key difference lies, right? With PATM, it's not just a perceived odor. It's causing actual physical reactions in other people. You got it. It's not just in their heads. We're talking observable symptoms like sneezing, hives, even changes in body odor. And that's what Professor Veal, the RD expert, emphasizes too. He's clear that PATM involves real physical reactions, not just an imagined smell. Right. And that validation is so important for people with PATM because for so long they've been told it's all psychological. Like they're making it up. Exactly. But now with Professor C. Keen's research, there's scientific evidence to back up their experiences. Yes, like finally the reality is being acknowledged. And it paves the way for more research and 
hopefully better understanding and treatment options. I'm thinking of Sandra. Her story really stuck with me. She's been living with PATM for over 15 years. Wow, that's a long time. And she was initially told it might be ORD, but she knew it was something different. Well, yeah, when you're seeing people around you having these reactions. Exactly. It started with her boss. He'd have these sneezing fits whenever he was around her. Oh, no. And then it started happening with her colleagues, friends, even her husband. It must have been so isolating for her. It was. She talks about feeling guilty, anxious, even depressed about it. It really affected her work life, too. It makes you realize the ripple effect this condition can have, impacting all areas of someone's life. And get this, Sandra says she sometimes experiences those same allergic reactions herself. Wait, seriously? Like she's allergic to herself? It sounds crazy, but that's what she reports. That's wild. It just shows how much we still don't know about PATM and how complex it can be. Then there's Alex. He told us about his brother, Miguel, who has PATM. Okay. And what's interesting is that Alex himself doesn't have any reactions to his brother. Hmm. So... Some people are affected and others aren't. Right. And it seems like that's a common thread. A lot of people with PATM say their close family members are fine. That's really interesting. Could there be a genetic component to this, maybe? Like some people are predisposed to be more sensitive to these chemicals? It's definitely a possibility. And it raises questions about what other factors might influence those sensitivities. Yeah, like why are some people completely unaffected? while others have severe reactions. There's so much more to uncover. It's like a puzzle, and we're just starting to put the pieces together. This deep dive has been so eye-opening. I had no idea this condition even existed before. Me neither. And it makes you think how many other things are out there that we're completely unaware of. It's a reminder that there's always more to learn and that we should approach everything with an open mind. Exactly. And maybe a little bit of curiosity, too, right? Because that's what keeps us exploring and discovering new things. Totally. That's what these deep dives are all about. So where do we go from here? What are the key takeaways from this exploration of PATM? Well, for me, it's about empathy. Imagine living with this condition, knowing your presence can make people uncomfortable. It's got to be a lot to deal with. It's a good reminder to be understanding and compassionate, even when we don't fully understand what someone's going through. Right. You never know what invisible struggles someone might be facing. This deep dive has been amazing. It's challenged our assumptions and opened our eyes to a whole new world of human experience. Absolutely. And it's left me with a sense of wonder and a desire to learn more about the mysteries of the human body and the ways we interact with the world around us. It's incredible to think that something as seemingly simple as body odor could be connected to such a complex and fascinating condition. And that's just scratching the surface. Who knows what other secrets are waiting to be uncovered? That's the beauty of science, always pushing the boundaries of knowledge and understanding. And that's a wrap on this deep dive into the world of PATM. Thanks for joining us. Wow, what a journey this deep dive has been. We started off talking about PATM, and I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical at first. It does sound unbelievable, doesn't it? Like something out of science fiction. Right. But the more we learn about it, the more fascinating it gets. We've heard from people whose lives have been turned upside down by this condition, and now we have this groundbreaking research from Japan. And that's what's so amazing about this deep dive. It's brought together personal stories and scientific evidence to shed light on a phenomenon that's been hidden for so long. It's like we're finally giving a voice to those who have felt silenced and dismissed. And validating their experiences. Professor Seekin's research is a game changer, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. For someone like Fahima, who has had to isolate herself to avoid triggering reactions, this research offers hope and a sense of relief. It's like a weight has been lifted. It's no longer just, oh, it's all in your head. Now there's scientific proof that something's happening. And that opens up possibilities for treatments, maybe even a cure someday. It makes you wonder what other mysteries are out there waiting to be explored. Right. Like, what else don't we know about the human body and how we interact with each other? So much is still unknown. It's both humbling and exciting. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one thing you'd want our listeners to take away from this? Empathy. Hey, imagine living with PATM, knowing that your mere presence can cause discomfort to those around you. It must be incredibly isolating and stressful. It's a powerful reminder that we should always try to be understanding and compassionate, even when we don't fully grasp what someone else is going through. Exactly. We all have our own unique experiences and challenges.